classical dancer, teacher, choreographer, author, and also the creator of the pioneering Joana Seira's Online Dance School and Joana Seira's World, online platforms that deliver authentic Egyptian dance, personal discovery and empowerment. And today I'm coming with another video, an exciting one, inspired by dancers from all over the world. The video is about how to become a professional oriental dancer. And in the process of sharing a few strategies or a few truth bombs with you, I'm also going to destroy a couple of ideas that are running around in the internet that I believe don't help anyone to become a professional, successful oriental dancer, not in the long term and not in an interesting level, at least. So I have to tell you that I have been working in the field of Egyptian dance exclusively for more than 20 years. Yes, that's incredible. I have lived two for, from, with Egyptian dance for more than 20 years. I started very early and I moved to Egypt to start my career there very, very early. And I have to admit, I have moved faster than most dancers and I have done things that most dancers would be terrified of doing. So I'm very proud of myself. I'm very proud of my career, of what I built. And mostly I'm very proud of the person I became in the process of building this career that is in constant expansion due to my talents and due to my work and resilience. Now, what takes to become a professional oriental dancer? I have a few formulas and I have a few formula breakers as well. The first thing you got to know is everyone is different and every story is different. For me, it made all the sense to move to Egypt, to go directly into the core of the dance. For me, there was a vision in my mind that told me, you're going to go there, you're going to recover the essence, you're going to remember what this dance is all about, who you are, and then you're going to spread it all over the world. You're going to bring the message of authentic Egyptian dance, of the magic of Egyptian dance to the entire world. And baby, that's what I've been doing so far until here, big time. And I'm so, so happy to see that my vision has carried me through more than 20 years of a high-level career. Now, this is the first strategy or tip I would like to share with you. We are different and we live in different places, we, di we live with different conditions, we live in countries with orchestras, without orchestras, with a market, without a market. We are not all in the same position when we start thinking about becoming a professional oriental dancer, but we are all in the same position in the sense that we all have the power to create a vision for ourselves and the vision for our work in Egyptian dance. Without a vision, you're gonna get lost very soon. You're gonna drop it. You're gonna quit. You're gonna lose the fire. You're gonna lose the enthusiasm. You will not have the strength and the reason why behind you that will pull you through all the challenges and ups and downs that you're inevitably gonna go through. So the first thing I would tell anyone who wants to become a professional oriental dancer is to not compare herself to the story of anyone because we are individuals and, as I said, we are in different circumstances and with different resources as well, but all of us can build a vision for what we want to build with this Egyptian dance, with this beautiful art, with this beautiful world. What is the dream behind our ambition to become an oriental dancer? Why do you want to do this? What is the motivation? What is the purpose? What is the big why behind your goal of becoming a professional oriental dancer? Second thing would be humbleness and the willingness to work your <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, it, independently of how talented you are, okay, you're going to have to work your <laughs> off <laughs> again and again and again and again. There will never come a time when you're known and you're respected and you're successful and you're going to say, now, baby, I can rest, I can drink a margarita in Cuba and enjoy the sun. Ain't going to happen. 
If you are not willing to do consistent work, if you're not willing to put your passion, your time, your focus, your energy, your practice, the humbleness to understand there is always something more to do, always something more to discover, always more to expand. If you don't have the stamina or don't want to have the stamina to work consistently, I'm not going to advise you to even dream about becoming a professional oriental dancer who lives from her work. It's not going to happen because it does require a lot of work. And by the way, the more talented you are, the more you have to work. <laughs> Contrary to what a lot of people think, just because you're very talented, it doesn't mean you don't have to work that much. It's exactly the opposite. The more talent you have, the more potential you have, the more you will know instinctively that you have to work. All right, to use that potential, to use that talent, to honor the talent that you've been given. So we have the vision behind, right? The goal of becoming a professional oriental dancer. We also have the humbleness and the work and the stamina. And for me, we have something that is super important and it is not common. It is not important for a lot of people that I know. And it is honesty and ethics and values. I know we live in a crazy world, believe me. I started my career in Cairo, as I told you, and then I started traveling the world to perform, to teach, to lecture. I've done practically everything that has to be done in the field of Egyptian dance, and I've worked with the best of the best and with the worst of the worst as well. So I can tell you that you're going to be offered a lot of opportunities in Cairo, in Egypt, outside of Egypt, that are not honorable, that are not going to feed your self-respect, and it is your job. If you want to become a professional dancer, oriental dancer, it is your job to know very well where you stand, to be honest in all of your dealings, to have your own ethics unmoved, untouched, and to respect yourself as a woman, as a professional, as a dancer. So everything that has to do with sexual harassment, prostitution offers, and believe me, I've lived through them a thousand times. Everything ha that has to do with gigs, you know that are dodgy and cheesy and you feel they're not gonna put you in a very nice, elegant, respectful way, baby, you gotta be strong and you gotta say no. Saying yes to opportunities is so important, but saying no to opportunities is also very important if you want to build a successful, long-term, professional career in Oriental dance. Now, of course, if you want to get instant fame, you don't need to care for anything that I'm sharing. You just have to have, you know, a, a porno flick on internet. You just have to have a scandal. You just got to cause some um, disturbance of some sort and people will know you, but they will not know you for years to come and they will not know you for the right reason. You want to be known for delivering incredible, excellent work. You want to be known because people trust you. You want to have clients, students, people who buy your shows, people who buy your workshops, your lectures, because they trust you and they know you're going to deliver excellent professional work. You don't want to be known because you were seen in a disco showing your breasts or whatever, you know. You don't want to be known because you married this rich Arab guy <laughs> and he was your sponsor. You don't want to be known for that. You're better than that, all right? So ethics and honesty and sticking to your values, it's so important in the long run. Now, another thing I would like to share with you is resilience and resourcefulness. Independently of where you are, independently of how much you have at your disposal, I mean money, I mean time, I mean material conditions, I mean um, emotional conditions, I mean living in a country with a market that is already there or living in a country with no market at all, independently of where you stand, you got to go back to the vision you have for your career, for what you would like your career to be, and you got to ask, what can I do with what I have at my disposal? Now, I've been training professional dancers and dancers who want to become professionals, mostly in my private online coaching programs. A lot of my students, I would say most of my students in my private online coaching programs are advanced students or already professional students, some of them with schools and with careers on their backs, okay? And here's one thing that I tell them all the time. 
Look at what you have and use what you have. I had a student who complained because in our country there was no respect for oriental dance and she told me, Joana, this is a struggle. There is no respect. People don't buy the shows, people don't buy this, people don't invest in the, the performances, they don't invest in a workshop. I tell her, okay, you're telling me what is not there. Tell me what is there. What's there in your particular country, in your city? She told me there are musicians, Egyptian musicians. I say, really? So you're complaining. You have one of the biggest, most important resources for an oriental dancer, a professional oriental dancer, which is good musicians, an Egyptian for that matter. And you are complaining that the audience at large does not respect your dance? No, forget the audience for now. Focus on what you have. You have great musicians, beautiful Egyptian musicians at your disposal. That is a luxury. I had to go to Egypt to have that. To have that. So believe me, this is not a given. Yeah, appreciate. What else do you have? Well, you have places where you can dance. You have theaters. Can you rent them? Yes, you can rent them. Where do you get the money? Well, you either invest from your own money and then you receive back from tickets or you can get a sponsor. You can go to companies. You can ask them to sponsor your show, to be a partner. You have to use your hand. If you believe that being a professional oriental dancer is just about being talented and showing up and being great, you are, you are on for a very rough awakening, all right? You got to be resourceful. You got to be intelligent. You got to use your creativity. You got to use what you have at your disposal and make the best of it. And last but not the least, you got to think about the business, baby. Yes. And I hate to say this because I'm not a business person. I'm an artist. I'm a teacher. I'm an author. I'm someone who is so much in love with the creative process. But if you want to live from your dance, you got to come to terms with business. And, and this is necessarily the last tip that I would share with you. Think in terms of business. What is bringing in the money? What is covering your expenses? What kind of work within the work you want to do is giving you the monetary, the financial feedback that allows you to leave from your dance? Because if you don't earn from your dance, you're going to drop it sooner or later, or you're going to keep it as a side hustle, not like your main job. This is something a lot of dancers don't understand. They are ashamed of even thinking about business, but they don't consider that if they don't think about business as well as they think about the creative side of the work, okay, they will not endure. It will not be a sustainable project. It will not be possible to survive and to thrive. You need money to live. We live in a world, a materialistic world, where you pay to drink water. You pay to sleep with a shelter. You pay to get clothes. So just because you're an artist, it doesn't mean you're off the hook and you don't have to worry about business. If you don't worry about business or if you don't want to learn how to uh, manage the business side of the dance, Again, truth bomb, you're not going to make it in the long run unless you take it as a side hustle and you have the money coming from another income source or you have someone sponsoring you and supporting you. I'm not talking about those kinds of situations. This video is about someone like me who has decided this is going to be my career and I'm going to live from it, for it and through it. So nothing of what I've done in my life has been handed to me. My parents could not help me, never. Nobody has ever helped me financially. I had to earn every penny from the age of 16. From the age of 16, I earned everything I ever spent in my life. So I know what I'm talking about. When I moved to Cairo, when I started to move out of Cairo to work around the world, my focus was on the art for sure, but it was also in the business and how I could scale and how I could upgrade and expand continuously. If you don't have this mindset of growth and if you don't have a mindset of down to earth, practical approach to your work, you're not going to do it in the long run. I'm sorry to tell you this. Last but not least, baby, there are no universal formulas regarding to success. 
Many dancers have been successful in different ways, in different markets, for different reasons, mastering different skills, and you have to find yours. So we're going to go full circle and we're going to go back to the vision you have for yourself. The vision you have for yourself should be connected to your particular skills, to the things you do the best and to the things or the niche that you know in your heart is going to be your niche. It's going to be your strong point. It's going to be your trademark. Yeah, your personal brand. So this takes time. It takes time to define. It doesn't come like that. You just have to get on the road, get started, be willing to put the work into it, be willing to build a legacy, not only to build instant fame, and above all, be willing to love the dance so much that you are never gonna quit. You're never gonna drop it. Even if times are hard, even if people like, they don't like, you love the dance. If you love it, it's gonna hold you throughout your life and it's gonna allow you to fall in love with it again and again and again. And that, my darling, is the fuel to a successful, happy career in Oriental dance. I hope this video was inspiring to you. Let me know what strategies are you using if you are a professional oriental dancer what strategies are you planning planning to use if you plan on becoming an oriental dancer professional oriental dancer let me know what you think about this subject send me your feedback share this video subscribe to my channel right now and consider joining Joanna Seda's World Newsletter. Yeah, if you do, you become an insider, you receive our news, our gifts, all of our exclusive goodies. Discover how to do that in the description box below this video. I will see you very, very soon. Until then, receive my love and a kiss. Mwah.